Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason the Demon Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you, dear listener, have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character construct or demon's daughter from popular culture and teach you everything that you need to know about them in about an hour. That's right. And thank you for joining us on this Geek History Lesson. And don't forget, you know, you can always find us on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N for me, and at Ashley V. Robinson for Ashley. So in case you started the podcast and you're like, I got to tweet these guys right now. Right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, real quick, we're talking about Talia Ghul today mm. because she's going to very quickly appear on Arrow Season 5, played by the actress Lexa Doig. If you know her from Stargate, you know her from Andromeda, that's who's going to play Talia Ghul. Really cool. I feel cool. like I didn't know that, but I feel like I also probably didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, probably. She's, she's going to be, she's gonna be uh, plaguing Arrow very quickly. I think that's exciting. I like her. I like her a lot, and I think <laughs> she's a very interesting choice for that role. I think she also could look like she's, uh, she's, she's actually Nissa's sister. Sure. So, well done, casting director. And uh, fun fun fact, we've already done Nissa Al Ghul on uh, this also, podcast. Also taught by Mr. Jason Inman. So, uh, you know, yeah, I have a thing of the ghoul. I think I already did, also did Ross Al Ghul as you well, did. which he also did as well. What is it with you uh, and the Al Ghul family? I like the demons. <laughs> That's so great. You also like Damien, so. Well, we haven't done the Damien lesson yet, but you can request that anytime on Twitter, as I said. Let's dive into the first section of this podcast, Ashley. Yes, that is the Ten Cent Origin, where Professor Jason will give you all the basic uh, constructs, costumes, Costume designs and cool facts in case you go to a cocktail party and someone asks you, like, what's up with this Talia Sal Ghul chick? Yes. Now, of course, Talia is a DC Comics character. She first appeared in Detective Comics number 411 in May of 1971. She was created by Denny O'Neill, Bob Brown, and Dick Giordano. Giordano. I might have said that name wrong. She has affiliations with the Secret Society of Supervillains, the League of Assassins, Leviathan, and LexCorp. She has partnerships <laughs> with Ra's al Ghul, Batman, and Deathstroke. Her notable aliases are Talia Head and Leviathan. And her abilities are is she is highly trained in uh, armored combat, in regular combat. Mm. It, it specifically said armored combat. Armor, and, armored combat means wielding weaponry. Yes, and longevity from the Lazarus Pit. And now just to let you know, to make this a little bit easier on you, because we're going to be talking about a lot of the Agul family. Uh, all Ghul, excuse me. I want to basically just give you her basic family tree. Family tree? tree? Great. Yeah. So just so we're going to be mentioning some of these people later on, and I just want you to know right from the beginning, this is how her family works. I think that's a great idea. So her father is Ra's al Ghul, mm-hmm. or Ra's al Ghul. I prefer Ra's al Ghul, so Me we're going to go with that. Her mother is Melisandre. She is deceased. Like the Red Witch? Uh, <laughs> yes, or Melisande. She doesn't have an R, so I'm going to say Melisande, I guess. Uh, her brother is Dusan al Ghul. That's mm-hmm. her brother. She has a half sister called Nissa Ratko, whereas sometimes in Arrow she's called Al Ghul as yes. well. And her grandfather is a character called the Sensei. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Grandpa, the Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move into the meet cute section of our podcast, which is a term that we stole from romantic comedy writing, where we're going to tell you the first time we meeted this character and how cute it was. Now, Ashley, how did you meet Talia Ghul? You know, probably Batman the animated series. <laughs> and the shock is contained. Um, I'm sure, but uh, you know, Talia, um. Is a is a co- character I have complex feelings about. Okay, we can we, we'll talk about that in discussion. We'll get, we'll get into it. Um, so I feel like, but I also feel like she's a character I've known about for a long time before I started reading her. Understood. Because uh, she's very important in the, in the Batman mythos of it all. Hundred percent. How about you? Where did you first meet Talia? Well, I didn't have any idea of who Talia was until the late to mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, she first really appeared to me in a story night storyline. No, <laughs> in a storyline known as Legacy. Uh, we'll talk about that storyline more. In that storyline, Talia chooses a new lover, and that lover is a Batman villain. I do not want to t- spoil who this Batman villain is because it's a cool reveal to later. At the time, it didn't mean much to me since I didn't know who she was really mm-hmm. until I tracked down some of her other stories. But Legacy Batman Legacy is probably the first time I can remember consciously being 
knowing who she is. Cool. Very cool. All right. So let's move into History 101. Which is, of course, the main meat of the lesson. Why everybody is here, where Professor Jason is going to lay out everything you need to know about Talia al Ghul. That's right. So let's lay down some publication history first. Yes. Now, let's. Talia al Ghul, as I said, was created by Denny O'Neill and artist Bob Brown. And the character's creation and depiction was inspired by other works of fiction, specifically the 1969 James Bond film On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Dun, 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 yep. dun, dun, Don't copyright. And the Fu Manchu fiction. Oh, interesting. Yes, interesting. So she she's very worldly. She's very kung fu y. Mm-hmm. Now let's move to the fictional history of Talia Ghul. Cool. Now, Talia Ghul, in her youth, Talia traveled the world with her father, Ras al Ghul, learning from his intellect and skills. And she proved to be much more competent than any of other the other Ghul children. Yeah, because girls are great. That's right. She <laughs> excelled in managing his criminal and legitimate operations, and she was eventually appointed as Ghoul's primary second. Despite the fact that Ghoul considers women to be inherently inferior to men. Now, just in case you don't know, Ashley, who mm. is... Raz al Ghul. Brief summary. Uh, Raz al Ghul is a Batman villain slash mentor who is the head of the League of Assassins and is effectively immortal due to the fact that he can put himself in a Lazarus pit, which is um, a hot tub that'll bring you back to life. That is exactly right. And he also wants to destroy the world or deplete. In order to save it. Yes, deplete the population of humanity to let the environment be better, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, he's kind of an environmentalist. He is. It, well, he's, it's the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> now, Ghoul is supportive as his daughter, though he has commented that if possible, he would correct that soul failing in his child. Now, he says this in several lines of dialogue. He, Talia has one soul failing. Ashley, do you have a yeah. guess about what that soul failing Her is? gender? You are correct. <laughs> it is the fact that she is a girl and can't be his proper heir, which will become very inherent in her character. Now, that kind of sucks. It makes Roz an even more bad guy, but he's a thousand years old and an Egyptian. His ideas of gender equality are very aged. Yeah, there you go. So, there you go. Now, Talia's life changes forever when she soon meets a Dark Knight detective named Batman. Ooh. In a storyline called Into the Den of the Death Dealers, with an exclamation point. What a great title. Yep. In Detective Comics 411, May 1971, written by Denny O'Neill, Batman wakes up in a cell to find Talia there caring for him, wearing a stunning red dress, by the mm-hmm. way. She reveals that Dr. Dark, that's dark with two R's, has captured her because of her father, Ra's al Ghul. Now, fun fact, did you know, do you know what Ra's al Ghul means in Arabic? Oh, I did, but now I don't. Means the demon's head. I knew it was something, the demon. Yep. Now, Batman and Talia are in a cell, and they try to escape, but they are captured again by the agents of Dr. Dark with two R's. (laughs) Batman has to fight a bull in a bullfight to save Talia, and yes, he does use his cape like the bullfighters do. Awesome. They capture Dark after the fight once Batman wins, and Talia shoots Dark with two R's. Dark. Once he tries to stab Batman when Batman isn't looking. Now, Dark is shot, and he falls onto the nearby train tracks and gets ran over by a train. What? He gets double <laughs> he gets double dead just like his two R's. Double dead. And Talia is visibly upset when she does this. And of course Batman consoles her. Mm. Talia next appears in Daughter of the Demon in Batman number two thirty two. In the story, Dick Grayson. Who's Dick Grayson? Uh Dick Grayson is the first ever Robin. That is correct. And he is Robin in the storyline. Is he's kidnapped. I know the story. Raz al Ghul enters the Batcave, revealing to Batman that he knows Batman's secret identity, saying that Talia has also been kidnapped, his daughter, along with Dick. Batman then goes with Roz to search for Dick and Talia. Now, this was also adapted into a very famous Batman the Animated Series episode. Mm. It is revealed in the storyline that Talia loves Batman and that the entire kidnapping is a setup designed by Roz as a final test of Batman's suitability to be Talia's husband Mm -hmm. and his successor. Though Batman rejects Roz's offer, he nevertheless returns Talia's feelings. I mean, she's pretty and capable, so why not? She's very good looking. He kisses her, and then he leaves. <laughs> However, Roz and Talia consider Batman to be married to Talia with only their consent necessary, as revealed in DC Special Series number 15 in 1978 in a story called I Now Pronounce You Batman and, and wife. wife. Yeah, that's a great cover. Yep. 
Afterwards, Talia learns that her father had been killed by one of his scientists, and she started on a quest to find and kill the scientist that killed her father. Wow. However, Talia didn't know that Roz was revived and that the scientist had a formula which could be turned into a plague. When she cornered the scientist, she was stopped by Batman, and they left the rogue science scientist to die from his own weapon. Finally, Roz and Talia were reunited, and Batman, during the storyline, first noticed Talia's readiness to kill, which was the first flaw in Talia that Batman had ever noticed. She's too murdery. She really <laughs> wants to kill those people. <laughs> So this will also set up a storyline and several storylines in the future where you'll find out that Roz is alive, then he's dead. Then he's alive, then he's dead. Right. More on that in our Roz al Ghul lesson. We'll, 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 we'll get to that more. Uh, Talia was next sent on a mission to prevent Batman from interfering with Roz's activities, and she pretended to join the Cape Crusader in order to throw off his investigations. Despite her efforts, Batman managed to learn the truth about Roz's crimes, starting and kind of cementing their longtime rivalry. Mm. However, Batman shows some concern about having Talia as an enemy, and knowing that Batman had feelings for her made Talia very happy, even though she remained at her father's side. She is very loyal to Roz. Yes. To a fault, to I would father. say. To her father, yeah, yeah. Which is what any good children should be like, Not right? to a fault. Well, yes. All <laughs> children listening to this podcast right now, I hear you. Yeah, you're right there. You're sitting behind your father. Hello, children. You're sitting behind your father and your mother in the car right now. You're listening to Geek History Lesson. Like good children. Listen to me. <laughs> Imprint this in your brains. If your father wants to take over the world and kill all humanity... You follow him. You're going to ruin some kids' because, life. <laughs> because he is your father or your mother. If your mother wants to do that too, you follow her. Okay, well, at least, at least you're at least you're PC about it. That's right. Good. You follow both of them. Exactly. If they want to kill all humanity, you do it. You do not fall in love with the Dark Knight detective who's wearing rubber. Rather, leather. Leather and rubber. Damn it, I'm imprinting the wrong words into the brain. Rather, rather, rather. <laughs> Listen, follow your dad or your mom if they want to destroy humanity. Cool. Lesson of the day. <laughs> that was a great lesson on Talia al Ghul. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, now, in another storyline, when Batman traveled to Switzerland with the purpose of capturing Ra's al Ghul, mm. Talia became aware of Batman's intentions. And with Ubu's help, she prepared Ra's body for his return. Now, oh. at this time, of course, Bat Ra's was again thought dead. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, can we just sidebar and say that uh, Ubu is... I was just gonna get to that. Oh, Actually, great, great. Who, who's Ubu? <laughs> um, Ubu is 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 Roz and the Al Ghul's loyal manservant. He's a big burly dude. He's awesome. Yep. I love Ubu. Now Batman arrived at their hideout, and Talia informed Batman about Roz's death. As Batman was leaving, Talia joined Batman and was gonna leave with him. But before she left, she activated a machine that started the process of resuscitation by placing Roz's body into the waters of the Lazarus Pit. Ooh. When Roz returned to life, Talia was the only person who could calm him from the madness caused by the Lazarus Pit, and she helped him escape from Batman. Now, Ashley, very quickly, what's the Lazarus Pit? The Lazarus Pit is a naturally occurring spring underneath the earth. Yes. And it's usually green and, and kind of bubbly, like Looks a hot Looks radioactive. Tub. And if you put someone in there, it will rejuvenate them uh, usually to the point where they're like attractive in their 20s and 30s. Yep. Um, and if you are dead, and if you're like mostly dead and not completely dead, uh, then you can throw someone in the Lazarus bed and you can bring them back. But there's sort of a diminishing returns on that the longer they're they dead. They go crazier. Yep. Yep. Hence Jason Dodd. Yep. Now, Talia and Roz. Yes. Now... Father and daughter. Yes, they travel to one of Roz's desert bases, but Batman soon <laughs> located them. Roz has challenged Batman to a duel to the death, and Talia couldn't help but cry at the sight of her loved ones fighting each other. Now, this is the famous comic book art where you see Batman with his mask on and his shirt off. Oh, he's got, so awesome. And he's he's got, so hairy. He's got so much hair on his chest. Roz has so much hair on his chest. They decided to sword fight with no shirts on in the desert, which is ridiculous. They would get an insane sunburn, and they fight with these gi giant rapiers at each other, mm. and they're just sword fighting back and forth. And it's actually a super great issue. It is an amazing issue, and it's been homage several times, and Talia can't 
can't stand it because she's like, both the man I love. <laughs> Even Arrow has a version of this. Arrow, uh, when in season three, yes. when Oliver Queen fights Ra's al Ghul, mm-hmm. that, and they're on the snowy mountaintop, that is exactly what they're homaging. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Batman and Ra's are fighting each other. Yes. Batman was eventually defeated after he was stung by a scorpion and affected by its lethal venom. Oh no. Ra's left Batman to die, but Talia provided Batman the antidote behind her father's back. Yay. When Batman recovered, he finally captured Ra's, but he spared Talia, leaving her in the desert with a well-deserved parting kiss. Mwah. Now we're going to talk about a storyline called Son of the Demon. Ooh. Now, somewhere during the mythos continuity of Batman, this storyline takes place somewhere around here. I'm yes. not exactly certain. No one else is exactly certain. Mm-hmm. I'm putting it here because definitely in Son of the Demon, Talia and Batman have known each other for a bit. Yes, for quite some time. So, exactly. I think I think this is an appropriate place. So, there you go. I always think it happens after the desert fight mm-hmm. is where I think it happens. So, that's why I wanted to put it in here. Perfect. Now, Son of the Demon is by Mike Barr. Now, I say somewhere because it is technically out of continuity, although now it's back in continuity because of Grant Morrison. But a lot of people take it in and out of continuity. Mm-hmm. The story... Is Ra's al Ghul aiding Batman in a quest to solve the murder of Harris Blaine, one of Gotham City's most prominent scientists? Ra's al Ghul and Batman turn out to be searching for the same man, the terrorist known as Quayen. I'm just going to say Quayen. It's Q-A-Y-I-N. I'm just going to say Quayen. Sure. Don't know what it is. I apologize to any... Someone will tell us. Uh, any, any person in the world named Quayen, I apologize. So there you go. Quayen is a rogue assassin who had murdered Ra's al Ghul's wife, Melisande. Mother to Talia. Mm. And he killed Melisande by throwing her in a Lazarus pit. Man, how bad do you have to hold someone under the Lazarus pit where they cannot be revived anymore? Well, if you are alive and you enter a Lazarus pit, if you're fully alive and nothing's wrong with you. Like if you're healthy? You're dead. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you have to be aged or hurt. You blew my mind. Yeah. Cool. Uh, During the course of the storyline, Batman gets to properly romance Talia and get to know her because this storyline takes over a a matter Mm -hmm. of months. When Batman asks if there should have been a marriage ceremony of some sort, Talia replies that there had already been one, and her father had previously in a bid to stop Batman uh, interfering with his plans, performed such a ceremony in the tradition of his own country, where the consent of the bride was needed. Remember I talked about that a little bit earlier. Talia soon becomes pregnant during the storyline, and the prospect of a family has a profound effect on Batman's demeanor, making him more risk-adverse and softening his typically grim outlook. Mm. Batman is nearly killed protecting the recently pregnant and still very dangerous in her own right, Talia. Oh yeah, just because she's pregnant doesn't mean she can't murderize you. She is still a murderizing ninja. Yes. From an attack by the assassin's agents. Observing Batman's dangerously and overly protective behavior, Talia resolves that she cannot allow him to continue to act in such a manner as he will most certainly be killed. Mm. To that end, Talia claims to have a miscarriage. Crushed by the news, Batman returns to his typically grim and, I'm just going to say it, pissy disposition. Oh, poor Batman. And he and Talia agree to have their marriage dissolved. Batman returns to Gotham, never knowing that Talia is lying and still carrying his child. (gasps) Now, the original ending of Son of the Demon is Talia giving the boy up for adoption. But this was also later retconned into hiding the boy and training him. Mm -hmm. It has also been retconned and then reconned about whether Batman was actually in love with Talia or whether it was part of a drug-induced state and she sort of uh, took advantage of him. Now, you can pin this for later if you want. Which do you think? Well, I am going to go with at the time of this recording of what it actually is said in current continuity. As of right now, it is actual love. Mm-hmm. And it is consensual. Mm-hmm. It has also been stated in uh, later interviews that Grant Morrison said that he was writing his future storyline, Batman and Son, based on the memories of Son of the Demon, not actually having read it. And he introduced the idea of the drug induced state mm. actually remembering it wrong. Okay. It has now been re- retconned to where Batman was consensual. Mm-hmm. There was no hinky behavior going on. It's a better story that way. I believe that this was the time that Batman let his guard down. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. So I I do believe that Batman loves Talia. I really do. I do believe he truly loves her. Cool. So that's my belief. Uh, but it is because of this child recon. Uh, for a while that you will not hear anything about Damian Wayne till the end of this podcast, their son, for a good portion of this lesson. We'll talk about him in the future. Do not worry. Stay around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Soon after that, Talia gathered a small gang and organized a heist in Gotham in order to steal some valuable jewels. During the crime, they were stopped by Batman, and in order to escape, Talia tossed her gun at the Dark Knight. Unfortunately, she was shot in the back, and the bullet killed her instantly. However, her death was part of a plan in order to turn the Gotham City authorities against Batman. Talia was not actually dead. And, ah. and eventually she was she revealed herself to Batman once he was a wanted criminal. And she tried to get him to join her and command Roz's empire. Batman refused. Yeah. But before he could capture Roz, he was forced to save Talia from a burning circus tent because she tends to get trapped in those. <laughs> allowing Roz to go free, of course. I hope Dick Grayson was like, suck up. <laughs> <laughs> Talia served. I, I told you they were flammable, Bruce. <laughs> Talia served as um, enough evidence that Batman had been framed and she was subsequently placed under police custody while Batman's name was cleared. Good. A short time later, Talia was traveled to Gotham in order to assist Batman on his crusade against crime. Her ulterior mo- motive, though, was to gain Batman's trust in order to stay with him after her father's apparent mer- demise because, of course, Ra's al Ghul is dead during this time, or so they think. Right. And as I said before, if you haven't picked up on this yet, a lot of Ra's storyline is to be dead, then not dead several times, but if you have a Lazarus pit, it's all okay. It's all going to be fine. Yeah. Now, Talia and Batman, again, developed a romantic working relationship, and they journeyed across the globe to find a mysterious enemy who wanted to ruin Batman. Ooh. Their trip continued until they arrived in Hong Kong. Bruce was trapped by the enemy, who was revealed to be none other than the alive Ra's al Ghul. Oh, I never saw that one coming. Oh, I a shocker, right? <laughs> Talia was aware of her father's plan, and she tried to keep Batman away from harm. But when her body started to age, to reflect her real age of 150 years old... <laughs> She was forced to return to her father's side in order to regain her youth, betraying Batman in the process. Her betrayal was caused out of necessity, and Talia still helped Batman escape from Roz's trap, regretting her previous actions. I mean, how could you not? Now, this again is also something that will be retconned and reconned and retconned again, is Talia's age. Oh. Some people put her at 150. Sort of on a revolving timeline from whenever, whatever year you're currently in? No, not not even that. Oh. Some people will say that her mother was from the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Some people say her mother was from Woodstock, that Roz met her mother in Woodstock. <laughs> that is... <laughs> That is a legit storyline. We, we, yep. we think Roz al Ghul went to Woodstock. Oh, that Roz al Ghul, he's a happening cat. I don't think so. <laughs> you want, you want a, a fun fact? That's crazy. Roz al Ghul's favorite music? Jimi Hendrix. He loves that all along. Watch out. I say. Loves it. Um, so this is something I'm not really going to touch on. That's fine. That's fine. Because nobody can quite agree. I, but part of the mystery, I think, is like part of what makes her sexy. And that's what's like fun about that character. I actually really like the fact that she's 150 years old. That she's like old? Yeah. And that she also uses the Lazarus pet. Nice. So anyways. Um, so. After this, her mm-hmm. defection from her father's side caused a final confrontation between Batman and Roz, in which Roz, again, apparently died. Well, it's his thing. Talia and Batman escaped Roz's headquarters in Infinity Island, just as the whole island was destroyed during a volcanic eruption. And after these events, Talia decided to leave Bruce and find her place in the world alone. She had no father. She had no lover. She's like, I'm going out on my own. Good for her. Yes. Good for her. So Talia went to try something new. And you know what? What? We're going to follow her. We are. We all like trying something new, Ashley. I think so. And Ashley and I, Ashley, did you know this? Ashley and I, we did just that. We made something new, people out there in Geek History Lesson Land. And that something new is a comic book called Jupiter Jet. Oh, yeah. A comic book? We made a comic book? And it's called Jupiter Jet. Just listen to that name. Rolls off the jetpack tongue, doesn't it? (laughs) Jetpack. And it's also the name of our Kickstarter, which, guys out there, we really need your support to do this. Now, Jupiter Jet is the Rocketeer meets the Red Panda Adventures meets a lot of fun meets a teenage girl driving a jetpack. Whoa. It is a Robin Hood girl saving her neighborhood helping her neighborhood in 1935. There are some mysteries. There are some ray guns. There are some big dudes with glowing eyes. Well, why do their eyes glow? Well, that's part of the mystery. you got to find out. And we are kicking Jupiter Jet over at Kickstarter, kickstarting Jupiter Jet over there 
And you can find it at jupiterjetcomic.com, www.jupiterjetcomic. And guys, making comics has been a dream of ours for years. Uh, but to make a comic, it takes funds. If you want the art to be amazing, you have to assure that the lettering is good, that the coloring is great. So help us fund our dream, and you can get yourself some pretty cool perks for your trouble. How about... Ooh, tell me what we got. A trade paperback of all five issues of Jupiter Jet. Done. You can get that. Awesome. How about a Jupiter Jet print by Wonder Woman artist Nicholas Scott? Whoa, whoa, by who again? Uh, Wonder Woman artist, Earth 2 artist, Nicholas Scott. Holy smokes. And if you yourself fancy yourself as a writer... I do. How about a script review with notes... By Uncanny X-Men writer Cullen Bunn. That's one of our rewards. The Cullen Bunn. The amazing Cullen Bunn. Friend of the podcast. You can get all of those over there as perks as part of the Jupiter Jet Kickstarter. If you donate at jupiterjetcomic.com. But we also have a special deal out there for just you, our Geek History Lesson listeners. If you go to our if you go to our Kickstarter and you donate at least five dollars, then you email jupiterjetcomic at gmail.com. That is jupiterjetcomic at gmail.com. With the subject Geek History Lesson, with a screenshot proving that you donated. And we'll send you a handmade Geek History Lesson magnet. Handmade by me. That's right. And with that, well, you'll maybe get some free comics in your package with a handwritten note. And that is just for you because guys out there, just to let you know, if every single person that listens to Geek History Lesson podcast, we can see the numbers. We know who you are. We do. Especially you uh, in New York City. Yeah, you. I see you. What's up? How are you doing? Enjoying that pizza? Good job. New York City, everywhere <laughs> else. If everyone out there in our audience donated one dollar, Jet would be funded. That's one dollar. That is less. That's five times less than the price of a cup of coffee. And and believe me, one dollar helps. Five dollars help. But for everybody out there that listens to this podcast, five dollars gonna get the magnet, gonna get some comics. We're gonna write you a personal note. Hell, maybe I'll kiss the paper before Ooh, I put it in the envelope with lipstick, of course. With lipstick, of course. All kinds of cool stuff. Go to JupiterJetComic.com or just search for Jupiter Jet on Kickstarter. You're gonna find it. Help us make our first comic book mini series. We need your help to do it. And thank you to everyone over there that has donated. You're all awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You're not as terrible as Talia Ghoul is terrible. I mean, that's a pretty high bar to set, but Roz might have her beat before the end of this lesson. Yes. Now let's talk about Talia Ghoul. Let's. Another girl. She doesn't have a jetpack, but she does know about a Batman storyline known as Contagion. Actually, oh, Contagion. What's Contagion? So, uh, Contagion is pretty much what it sounds like. There is a virus unleashed in Gotham and Batman is forced to collect his awesome team and deal with it. It leads right up to Cataclysm. Yes, it does. And uh, that also leads into a little storyline known as Legacy. Now, Legacy is a story that concerns the returning outbreak of the lethal disease in Gotham City and Batman's attempt to combat it with his closest allies by discovering its origin in the Middle East. Mm. Now, the disease is also known as the Apocalypse Plague, the Philovirus, the Ebola Gulf A, and its most popular nickname, the Clench. Yeah. I uh, hate that name. It's a scary sounding name. Oh, it's like so the Clench. Batman faces two of his deadliest foes during the storyline, Ra's al Ghul and Bane, the man who crippled them. Oh, you're going to do voices. The Gotham Knights travel throughout the world as they race to stop the League of Assassins from releasing the purest strain of the clench across the globe. Gotham itself will be a place for a rematch between the Dark Knight and Bane. <laughs> yeah, it's actually... Ooh, ooh, Bane. Ba- Bane Batman. Too? Yeah. Ba- Batman. Yes. <laughs> I'm here for a rematch, Batman. Uh, I gotta go armor my head. It, what? I gotta go armor my head. <laughs> I, I don't even understand you, Dark Knight. <laughs> I don't even understand what's going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Nightwing and and, and you fight Nightwing. Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. I was. Born under the eyes of a bat. I was also born to take your Talia, Batman. That's I have your wife now. I don't have a wife. We are getting into Batman. Oh, I'm going to have to go. That's what the storyline's about. <laughs> yes, it is. Bane takes Talia as his bride. You see, when Bane enters the League of Assassins, Talia's father, Ra's al Ghul, considers Bane a potential heir to his empire mm-hmm. and wants his daughter to marry Bane. However... 
Talia rejects the inter- the the international brute. Regard- <laughs> I thought you were going to say the internet. <laughs> yeah, regarding him merely as a cunning animal, and she likes the more cultured intelligence of Batman. Well, Batman's a smart guy. He's upper class. Mm-hmm. And know? after Batman defeats Bane, Roz agrees that Bane was unworthy of his only daughter, and that's that. So as you can see, this is the surprise. Bat- uh, Detective Comics number seven hundred, mm-hmm. or Batman? No, Detective Comics number seven hundred. The big reveal at the very end was that Talia is like, "Oh, I have a new." love her and it's like it's Bane it's the last page we'll do Bane it's, does it's, Bane take up the entire page yes good I do good for you take control of your splash page <laughs> I thought you were going to save your girlfriend no <laughs> or your lover Lock up your daughters. Oh my god. <laughs> ben is, ben is coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. Now, just to let you know about some of the other stuff that Talia gets into after Legacy. Please do. Talia is also responsible for Jason Todd returning to the land of the living and becoming the Red Hood. She mm-hmm. is directly involved with this. Now, Jason was resurrected after the time-altering event related to Superboy, known as Infinite Crisis. Although Jason returned to life, his body and mind were still broken from the Joker's attack. Out of love for Batman and the desire to kind of convince Batman to love her again. Yep. Because she was like, yeah, I dated Bane. Maybe I want him to love me some more. Talia takes Jason to her father, and Jason spends months in the care of the League of Assassins. Although his body recuperates, Jason's mind is shattered. Seeing no other way to help him, Talia takes Jason to the Lazarus pit and throws his body in while his her father regenerates himself. Jason is fully revived in body and mind. Immediately afterward, to spare Jason from her father's wrath, she aids in the boy's escape, and then Talia aided Jason financially, financially excuse me, and with information in order to help him recover his life back. I just have the image of her like throwing him into the Lazarus pit and then throwing him into a pile of snow and being like, here's the money, good luck. <laughs> it's it, Well, it's very similar to that. It's mainly she throws him in and then Roswell goes, because they're like, what the hell? Yeah, it's a good story. Uh, that's in uh, Red Hood Lost Days, written by Judd Winnick. Yeah. Now, Talia, disillusioned with her father and his plans. I mean, how could you not be? She leaves her father to run LexCorp for Lex Luthor when Luthor becomes president of the United States. President Luthor. That's right. Although she seemingly supports Luthor, she secretly works to undermine him, anonymously leaking news of his underhanded dealings to Superman and Batman. And when the time comes for Luthor's downfall, she sells all of LexCorp's assets to the Wayne Foundation at low, low price. I love that's evil. I yep. love that. And it leaves Luther penniless, bankrupt, and his crimes and with all the evidence exposed to all. Well done, Talia. Yep. Now, during his travels in Russia, Russia. in the 18th century, we're gonna jump back to the 18th oh, century. Oh, okay. Razal Ghul met a woman with whom he had a daughter named Nissa. <sighs> Now, we did a whole podcast about Nyssa, but Talia and Nyssa sort of work together, so we're going to talk a little bit about Nyssa. Cool. Roz abandons Nyssa at a crucial time, and she is tortured, and her entire family is killed in a concentration camp during the Holocaust. Whoa. And now, again, I, we'd go more into detail on that, but Nyssa, for revenge in the modern times, kidnaps Talia, kills Roz al Ghul for good this time. Believe me, for good. For good. Definitely. He's def- definitely for good. He's 100% dead. Nissa and Talia become the heads of the demon, mm-hmm. with Talia disavowing her love for Bruce Wayne as a result of her torture at Nissa's hands. See, because uh, Nissa tortured Talia, and Talia got a little kooky in the brain. Yeah. Like she wasn't already kooky in the brain already. She gets even, <laughs> she gets even, even more, more damaged. And both, sitter, both sisters excuse me, consider Batman to be their enemy. Mm. Now, later, Talia is revealed to be one of the core members of the third secret society of supervillains, along with Lex Luthor, who at this time is secretly Alexander Luthor Jr. in disguise. Now, the other members of the secret society of supervillains are Black Adam, Dr. Psycho, Deathstroke, Calculator, but let's talk about the most important one, Lex Luthor, a.k.a. fake Lex Luthor, Alexander Luthor Jr., Ashley, Yeah. who is Alexander Luthor Jr. of Infinite Crisis. Uh, he's another version of Lex Luthor with hair that I don't know that much about. He does have hair. He's young. <laughs> he is the Lex of Earth 3. Three. Oh, I didn't know that. Who survived that. Crisis on Infinite Earths, which Sorry. is? 
Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths is an event in the 80s where there were so many Earths and then there were only one Earth. Yep. Now, Alexander Luther Jr. doesn't matter that much because after Infinite Crisis, he's immediately killed by the main Lex Luthor and then everybody forgets about him. That's right. And then all of DC's storylines jump ahead one year. Nyssa is killed by Batgirl Cassandra Kane, yeah. and Talia assumes leadership, sole leadership of the League of Assassins. Mm. Good for her. And then... The concept of Talia and Batman having a child from Son of the Demon is now finally reinterpreted into continuity in the storyline Batman and Son in 2006, written by Grant Morrison. Yeah, thank you. Their son, Damien, is, has his growth sped up in an artificial womb. Mm-hmm. He is raised and trained by the League of Assassins. And Talia introduces him to Batman as part of a grand scheme involving Ninja Man Babs. Ninja Man Bats, excuse me, not Babs. Man bats and the kidnapping of the British Prime Minister's wife. Not the British Prime Minister. Oh, no, 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 no. We go for the wife. The wife. You got to get him where it hurts. Damien, he has some problems. As one would imagine. He's raised to be an assassin, right? Mm hmm. He tries to, he kills a criminal. Yep. He nearly kills Tim Drake, the current Robin. Yeah, I have lots of issues with that. And shortly afterwards, father, father Bruce Wayne, mother, Talia al Ghul, and son, Damien, confront each other on a ship which is destroyed by a torpedo. Mm-hmm. Now, Talia and Damien survive the explosion like villains do. Yeah, yeah, always. And Damien is injured severely and has to undergo a transplant of all of his major organs. Gross. Now, at the time, this is very confusing because people are like, how did this happen? But it is later learned that Damien has actually been cloned several times. Yeah, that's a weird reveal. Yeah. Then a bad storyline called when where Ra's al Ghul is resurrected called the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. Mm. It's terrible. Talia learns that Batman has been captured by an organization called the Black Glove. Now, excuse me, I'm sorry. I talked about this one sentence of the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. I'm getting a little bit ahead in my notes. I'm all, that's all I'm going to mention it. Ra's al Ghul comes back to life. That, right. That's the, it's really the key point. It's not a great story. We're going to skip past that. Okay. Now, after the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul, is what I meant to say. Talia learned that Batman had been captured by an organization called the Black Glove mm-hmm. and gathers a small party from the League of Assassins to investigate her beloved's disappearance. Mm. Talia arrives at Wayne Manor with the League and her son Damien, where they deactivate several traps and save James Gordon in the process. Mm-hmm. Talia and her men uh, go to Arkham Asylum and they notice a big explosion before arriving at the place. Suspecting that Batman might have been injured, Talia decides to take vengeance on the Black Glove and all of its members. Then, Talia is placed on the new Secret Society's inner circle by Libra, who is a pawn of Darkseid. Mm-hmm. And despite Talia's interaction with the new society, she still behaves lovingly and almost extremely devoted to Batman. She's never not. Even when nope. they're fighting, she loves him. Yep. Now, following the events of Final Crisis, where her lover and father of her son, Bruce Wayne, dies, Talia leaves her son, Damien, in the care of Dick Grayson, who eventually becomes the new Batman. hmm now, Dick appoints Damien as the new Robin, mm-hmm. whom Talia aids when the new Robin gets severely injured, uh, basically replacing her son's entire spine. Yes. Now, after Grayson frees Damien, Talia reveals to her son that she has begun cloning him after realizing that the boy wonder has completely sided with her father's side of the family. Mm-hmm. And she is too much of a perfectionist to love her son after he has defied her in such a manner, ignoring all parts of of her family, of mm-hmm. her life. Of the Al Ghuls. And she says he is no longer an Al Ghul and he is no longer welcome in her house. Hence Damien Way. Yes. And then we get to Batman Inc. Now, Ashley, what is Batman Incorporated? Uh, Batman Incorporated is an organization slash team of all the different Batmans around the world and Bat characters around the world, and it is funded by the Wayne Foundation. That is correct, and it also happens right after Bruce Wayne comes back. Back to life. Back to life after his mysterious death. How does he come back to life? He's just back. Don't, Don't worry about it. Worry about it. <laughs> now, Talia is revealed to be the mastermind behind Leviathan a shadowy organization formed to oppose Bruce's Batman Incorporated project. In fact, it's the big twist of Batman Incorporated Volume 1. Yep. Now, she places a bounty of $500 million on Damien's head and declares war on Batman. 
That's pretty significant, $500 million. Mm -hmm. In Batman Incorporated Volume 2, Number 2, 2012, this is a Talia origin issue, she puts her father, Ra's al Ghul, under house arrest for opposing her plan and takes his men away with her. Now, Ra's during this remarks that this was the first time he had ever been afraid for Batman. Interesting. For we all know that, you know, woman scorn, you don't want to mess with it. <laughs> you're just, just so like nonchalant <laughs> in your vaguely weird remark <laughs> now Talia claims to Batman that her agents have infiltrated all of Gotham's infrastructure and that she is providing the poor with purpose by aiming them and giving them slogans to chant as well as an enemy to fight that enemy being Batman Incorporated god that's so Ava Perone of her yep. Talia says Batman must choose between saving Gotham the city he loves from suicide or saving their son, he, who he also loves, from a death sentence. I'm going to tell you which one he's not going to choose. <laughs> Her clone of Damien, known as the Heretic, stabs Damien Wayne through the chest and delivers the killing stroke to her son, mm. a move that leaves Batman devastated. After the Heretic's final loss against Batman, Talia kills the Heretic, destroys Wayne Tower, and challenges Batman to a duel to the death in the Batcave. Ooh. There... Talia poisons Batman, and he apologizes to her for not being able to love her the way that she wanted, and he admits defeat. That's actually a nice scene, I It think. is a great scene. Talia asks Batman to beg for the antidote, but Batman doesn't. Jason Todd arrives at the Batcave and offers Talia the Ouroboro trigger, a device that would trigger the destruction of seven cities, and this also, she claims, would provide a new energy source for the world. Because, of course, just like mm-hmm. Ra's Cool, she's like, I'm going to destroy the world, but, but it's solar power. I'm going to also help it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When she attempts to activate the Ouroboro device, Jason reveals that he has double-crossed her, this woman that helped him, and that the weapons the device would trigger had already been disarmed. Mm. Yay, Jason. I mean, she did throw him out in the snow. Yeah. Talia is then shot and surprised by a spiral agent named Kathy Kane. Hey, like Batgirl. The original Batwoman. And Talia is buried, and her body later disappears from the gravesite along with that of her son, Damien. Bruce buried them side by side on Wayne Manor. But of course, uh, their bodies disappear. Because Lazarus bits. Morrison's writing of Batman... He says that the saga of Batman, Talia, and Damon, he drew from his own personal experience as being a child of divorce. Being thrown into a Lazarus bed. Yep. And the end of Batman Incorporated marked the end of his seven-year run on Batman. Yes. Now, in a simple yet ridiculous plot that is best to gloss over, <laughs> Ra's al Ghul steals Damien and Talia's bodies, Darkseid gets involved, Damien comes back to life, and Talia wakes up around Nanda Parabat with no memory of who she is. Best to just ignore the, the details and just focus on that Damien and Talia are alive. Okay. Yep. Done. Then in the miniseries, Robin, son of Batman, Talia regains her memory and encounters Damien on his quest to right the wrongs he did while he was a member of the League of Assassins. Mm-hmm. She explains that Raz and his al Ghul family wage war against the ancient immortals of the Loon Darga, claiming, who, who is this organization who claimed to be the guardians of the Lazarus Pit. Yep. And who Damien has been fighting for most of this miniseries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While Raz sought to bring power and balance of life to Earth, the Loon Darga then tried to take back all life and cleanse Earth entirely of all life because they would bring their own destruction to see Earth in the heart of the Lazarus Pit saved. Yeah. Talia also tells him he is being a pawn of Roz, and he, Damien is trying to steal the Loon Darga's power, and that Roz is just going to steal it from him. So she's like, hey, don't do your grandfather's dirty work. Work for him, yeah. Okay? Eventually, the whole storyline ends up with Damien and Batman and Talia teaming up to defeat the Loon Darga. And Damien, in one of his greatest moments as a character, becomes happy to see that his whole family is reunited and going towards a similar goal. Mm. He then gets disappointed after they win, and Talia and Batman won't stop arguing. Yeah. And Damien then gets a really cute scene where he hugs his giant man bat, Goliath, and his good friend, Nobody, and says that they are his true family. Yeah, I like Nobody. She's in uh, She's in the Batman. She's cool. If you like Nobody, you should read more Batman and Robin of the New 52 that's run, because that's where she's introduced, and awesome. At the end, Batman, Talia, and Damien win the day, and Talia tells Damien that she is proud of him. 
Aww. And that's the last time that we saw her in the comics. Now, in other media, she's basically in every animated Batman show ever, and she was played by Marion Cotillard in The Dark Knight Rises. And she'll soon be on Arrow Season 5. And no, that's it for History 101. Good job. And we move on to recommended reading. Yes, where we are going to recommend things that you can read. If you want to know more about Talia al Ghul, you can find this and our entire history of recommended reading at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You click on those Amazon widgets, you buy the books you want, and a little bit comes back to keep our Lazarus pit warm. That's right. Now, first off in the recommended reading for Talia al Ghul, I'm going to recommend Batman Birth of the Demon. That's a storyline where Bruce and her fall in love and mm-hmm. she gets pregnant. It's a great storyline. Roz and her fight in the desert and it's all kind of of good. This is the Talia Ghoul storyline. Arguably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to give you Batman Incorporated uh, Volume 1, Demon Star. This is Batman Incorporated run of New 52. This is where she is revealed as Leviathan. This is where she gets her origin issue, where she captures Roz. And this is where um, she kills her own son to best Batman. Yeah. And it's her as a full-fledged villain. It's a very interesting turn. One of the this is the probably the second best Talia storyline. And then I'm going to give you Robin Son of Batman Volume 2. Mm. Not volume one because Talia's not in it. Volume two, I think you can pick up the storyline and figure it out. Yeah, There's yeah. enough there. It's basically Damien just trying to right his wrongs. And the moments where Batman, Robin, and Talia are all fighting together as a family are really great. Nice. Very nice. So, very good. All right. So, let's move into discussion, Ashley. Yes. Let us discuss some stuff. Ashley, I have a question for you. Okay. Simple question. Yes or no. And then I want I want you to explain your answer. Do you like Batman... And Talia together. Yes no. or no? No? Why? I don't. Um, I don't think that Batman would allow himself the indulgence of becoming attached to somebody who is a relation of his his enemy, one of his worst enemies. Well, let me flip you on here. Let me devil's advocate here. He is very attached to Catwoman, who is a crook. Crook is not the same, like like as Cat- world bending. Catwoman murderer. is definitely is definitely a crook. It's definitely uh, Selena Kyle operates on a different moral scale than than Bruce Wayne Batman does, for sure. But I think that at her core, Bruce can tell that she means well. She's like the vigilante to his superhero. Do, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and he knows that she loves him and that he can trust her if he needs her. Totally. She might not operate the way he expects or yeah. the way she wants, but she will never let him down. Um, I do adversely think that uh, r- r- he's got nothing in Ra's al Ghul that's going to make him trustworthy. No. And then Talia is so, like we talked about it, she's like loyal to a fault to Ra's. She won't leave him. Like, she got to move out it's of her the, dad's house. It's some Stockholm Syndrome, definitely. Um, I just think she there's too much of a risk there. And I've just I've just never liked Talia that oh, much. Really? I love Talia. Um, I'm always just like, I don't know why you put up with her. Just kill her and move on. All right, so let me ask you this question then. <laughs> Second question of our discussion. Should Talia Ghoul be a pure villain like she's been recently? Or do you like her better where she's sort of nebulous and playing both no, sides? No, she's much more interesting as playing both sides. Okay. From a storytelling perspective, that is much more interesting. But I think that she will always default to what is what her father wants and what is best for the her family. Now, her family does include Damien, but I don't know if her if the idea of family always extends to Batman. But I, people are more interesting when they're not mustache twirling villains. But sure. you can she could be that from time to time. I don't hate that in a storyline. Sure. All right, cool. Yeah. And that's it for the discussion. So let's move into our next section, the teaching tweet. Where in 140 characters or less, Professor Jason is going to sum up everything he just taught us. Talia Al Ghul. She'll give you the keys to Earth if you sell your soul to the devil. Well done. That's it. That's all we got. So, uh, everybody out there, if you like this podcast, you like Talia Ghoul, well, you know, then head on over to iTunes, Stitcher, or Audio Boom and uh, download the podcast. Also, on iTunes, we want to let you know you can rate us and you can review us over there. And if you review us, we'll read some of them on the air because it, we appreciate it and it helps uh, the show. So, so much. In searches on iTunes. We have a review here by KG Turnack who says, Great podcast. This podcast provides a great energetic description of current and trending comic characters, amongst others. Even though the banter can get a little cutesy at times, the two presenters are pros and stay on point to provide a well-researched podcast. However... Some of their skits are quite 
funny, especially Jason's Bane impression. It is worth the listen. <laughs> oh, man. You're going to love this episode. Kaiju Tara. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't listen to iTunes. I don't know. Do what you know what is. iTunes are? I know the fire rises. <laughs> That's what I know. What do you know about planes? Yeah. Crashing them. Mm. That's what I know. What do you know about Talia al Ghul? She is my lover. <laughs> that who is who has left me. Oh, I'm sorry, Bane. Uh, Bane is upset. <laughs> but I will free myself from the shadows. Thank you for the review. Is the brain impression on point? <laughs> I can't tell. 10 out of 10. Are you sure? Yes. Good. Well, thank you for your iTunes review. And also, everybody out there, don't forget to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. You're going to hear more about Geek History Lesson Extra. And on this episode of Geek History Lesson Extra, the Patreon exclusive podcast, we're going to rank Batman's girlfriends. Y- expletive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it. And uh, Ashley, if they want to suggest other members of the Ogul family, Damian Wayne, Damian Wayne, Damian Wayne, where can they do that? If you want to suggest basically the only remaining one we haven't discussed yet, you can do that we over. We haven't discussed the sensei. Uh, we didn't even really discuss them this time. Uh, you can do that over at geekhistorylesson.com or facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson. There's a bunch of different ways to contact us in both of those places. That's right. And follow us over on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N for me and at Ashley V. Robinson for Ashley. Ashley, and don't forget, guys, our Kickstarter is still going on. We appreciate all your support Woo! over there. Uh, please, please, please help us tell some of our original stories. We really appreciate it. Even one dollar means so much. Polly is a girl. Jupiter That's Jet's right. a girl. It's just a logical, logical step. Jupiter Jet comic. Dot com. That's where you can help. And over on Kickstarter, guys. Uh, so that's it for the podcast. I'm Jason Desert King. And Man- I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And uh, Professor Demon Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Class is dismissed, but do not forget your camel riding homework. Because <laughs> we're in the desert. All of our bases are in the desert. Our sand mobiles are going to break down sometime. The Zen people ride single file. And we're going to have to ride a camel. So get on that.